Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you five tips for creating sharper images using GIMP. This is GIMP version 2.10.14 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as my GIMP book of layers and GIMP and Inkscape help articles so definitely check that out. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy. You can enroll in any of my Skillshare classes by visiting GIMPschool.com and you can get more with a premium membership to Davies Media Design. Your premium membership includes access to my GIMP Help Center app, my GIMP book of layers, and exclusive content not found on YouTube. You can start your premium membership with a seven day free trial and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So let's dive in with the five tips I recommend for getting sharper images in GIMP and I'll be working with a photo here that I took myself. You guys can download this for free. I'll include a link to this in the description. So my first tip for creating sharper photos in GIMP is actually going to start with the camera. And the reason for this is that you can't really produce a very sharp image in GIMP without a sharp image coming out of the camera to start with. It doesn't have to be totally perfect coming out of the camera, but it does have to be relatively in focus for you to have a nice sharp image at the end of this. So I'm gonna turn my camera on. Obviously, depending on the make and model of your camera, this process will be different, but usually you can enter the menu for the camera and I'm in manual mode, and so I can use my little joystick on the Canon to come over to the focus mode here. So I have this set to AI servo. There's also AI focus, so these are both autofocus modes. And up here on my lens, I can set this to AF, which, which stands for autofocus. And there is a viewfinder in here, obviously, and when I click this little button here on my camera, that's going to highlight the focus point inside of the viewfinder. And then I can use this little joystick and select the subject in my photo that I want to focus on. So once I have set my focus, I can then press the shutter button on my particular camera halfway down. That will then focus on that point that I set. And now when I take my photo, I'll have a nice crisp image. Obviously there's a little bit more to that. You don't wanna have the ISO or the ISO be set above something like a 400 or an 800. You can get away with higher ISOs if you have a nice camera or if there is enough lighting and you're still enough, but I do recommend keeping the ISO lower. Again, not gonna get too much into those other things. Just try to make sure that your focus point here in your camera is set on your subject and that'll help you take a nice crisp photo. So as I mentioned, every camera is gonna be different, so I do recommend checking out your camera manual to see how that process is going to work for you. So once you've taken your photo and you've imported it here to your computer, obviously to open this photo up in GIMP, just go to File Open and you're going to find the file on your computer. So this is my file in this case, so I'll hit Cancel. The second tip for making your photo sharper, at least in my opinion, is to wait to sharpen your image until you've done your image adjustments. So I'll quickly go over my image adjustments here for this tutorial. I have tutorials on all the various image adjustment tools in GIMP, but by waiting to do the image adjustments, you can get the color right. And then once you have the color right, then you can go in and sharpen those colors, sharpen the edges in the photo, and it's just gonna produce a better final result. So let's dive in here with the image adjustments. I'm just going to quickly do this again. So I'll go to colors levels. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to this. But you can see my photo for starters is already pretty brightly lit. It's a little dark in some parts, but it's not too bad and it's fairly in focus here. So I'm just going to adjust the highlight slider here. This is helping to bring out the highlights and here we can bring up the midtones. We don't wanna overdo this of course, because that will start to create noise. Here's a before, here is an after. So we can get more details out of this now. I'm gonna switch over and start color correcting this very quickly. So I'll start with the red channel. You can see that's bringing red in the highlights. And I can add or remove red here. I don't wanna overdo the red because there's already a lot of red in the photo. So now move on to green. And I don't wanna to add too much green here. So here's a before, here's an after. And finally, I'll do blue. So we're either adding blue or adding yellow to this. So this is adding yellow to the shadows. This is adding blue to the highlights, or I can add or remove blue on the shadows. Of course, removing the blue is going to add yellow. 
don't want to overdo that. Here's a before, here is an after. And you can see by brightening up the photo, we can see more of the details here. And that's going to help when we're sharpening because things like the wrinkles here and the jacket are things that will help bring out the details in this photo. So once I'm ready, I'll just click OK. So now I'll move on to my saturation. So go to colors, saturation, and let's just increase the saturation a little bit here. I don't want to make her too saturated. That looks good, so I'll click OK. And we'll go to colors, color temperature, and we can either increase the temperature here, which will make this a little warmer, or decrease it, which will make it a little cooler. So maybe increase it a bit. Click OK. And what I like to do is come over here to colors, hue saturation, and just play around with some of the singular colors in here. So for example, if I go with the yellow here and I turn down the saturation of that, I know we just turned it up with the uh, color temperature, but you can see that as I do that, it's not really affecting her face too much. It's more so taking out the artificial light that was right here. And so you can see that a lot right there. And I actually do like the look of that being minimized. So I'm gonna decrease the saturation of that we can also play around with the red, which obviously there's a lot of red in this photo. And it's actually affecting her skin tone a decent amount, so I'm not gonna overdo that. This is what the photo looked like before. Here's after, just by tweaking two of the colors. And I'll just leave it at that, because those are the two major colors going on in here. So I'll click OK, and we'll leave the image adjustments there. I also wanna recommend before you sharpen that you perform actions such as retouching the photo with the heel brush or the airbrush tool. And if you need to remove any sort of artifacts or you know any sort of irregularities in the photo, and that can include removing chromatic aberrations or removing noise, which you can do using the free plugin gimmick. Just search for those terms inside a gimmick. I won't go through that in this tutorial for the sake of time. But the reason you want to get rid of those things first is that the unsharp mask tool, which is what we're going to use to sharpen this, will bring those things out. So I recommend getting rid of those things first, and then we're going to dive into the actual sharpening portion. My third tip for creating sharper images in GIMP is to sharpen your image before you scale the image down. The reason being is that when you scale an image down, it's going to remove pixels from your photo, and thus it'll remove details, and it's going to create a lower quality final result. So whenever you try to sharpen a lower quality photo, that lower quality will show through, and it's just going to make the image look not quite as sharp. And I know that I've been sort of doing things backwards over the years. I usually scale the image first and then do all my edits. The reason being that GIMP is going to perform a little bit better with a smaller image, and I want GIMP to perform well for those of you with a slower computer. But when it comes to getting the best final result, I do recommend trying to sharpen that image first before you scale it down, and that'll prevent you from losing all those little details in your photo. So my photo here is a pretty high resolution image. It's over 5,000 pixels by over 3,400 pixels. So I will be sharpening this original image. I will not be transforming this image and that should help me get a nice crisp final result. My fourth tip is going to be to use the unsharp mask. And I know a lot of you already know that. There is a little trick in order to get a better result from the unsharp mask. And that is going to be especially true whenever you have things like noise in the image, color noise, or chromatic aberrations. Chromatic aberrations are basically those little fringes of color you see sometimes in a photo. Maybe it's a little bit green or a little bit purple. Color noise is the same thing as noise, but it's going to show up in different colors. The, usually it's the red, green, and blue colors that come through inside the little noise specks on the image. So this little trick is going to actually keep your image from enhancing all of those irregularities in your image when you sharpen them. That's usually what happens when you sharpen an image that has those imperfections. So what I'll do here to start is decompose this image to a lab image. So I'll go to colors, components, decompose. The color mode by default is RGB, so I'm gonna switch this down here to lab, and I'll set this to decompose to layers and click OK. All right, so here are our decomposed layers in lab mode. So this top layer, which has an L next to it, is going to be the luminance layer, and the bottom two are going to be color layers. So if I hide this, you can see that's what those look like. Obviously those look kind of weird, but I'm gonna unhide this. So the reason this is useful, especially for keeping things like color noise or uh, chromatic aberrations out of your image, is that when I sharpen this layer, 
it's only going to sharpen the luminance portion of my image and it's not going to touch the actual color so because this is a black and white image, the color is not really affected, especially based on what we're gonna do next with this tutorial. So there's actually two options when it comes to this method. And so I'll show you the first method here. What I'll do is I'll click and drag on this L layer over here to the original composition, the original tab, hover over the composition and release. So now we have our L layer over here. I'm going to come over here to the layer mode all the way down here to either LCH lightness or luminance. They're both gonna produce pretty much the same result in this case. So there shouldn't be really any change. There's going to be some minor changes to the colors with this method, so it's a little brighter right now. But next what I'll do is I'll come over here to Filters, Enhance, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. And so here is the Unsharp Mask tool. And when it comes to using this, you have Radius, Amount, and Threshold. I usually don't mess with the threshold, the radius and the amount are the two sliders here that I'm gonna tweak. But when you have a larger image, you can usually increase the amount by quite a bit. So in my case, again, 5,000 by 3,400, so it's a pretty large image. So it can handle me really cranking this up. And I can also adjust the radius here. So the radius can be usually somewhere between three and four. If you go above four, it starts getting to be a bit too much. But if I hold control and zoom in, the radius is essentially saying how large are the edges that we're trying to add contrast to. And that's how sharpening happens. Most sharpening takes place that way. You're just adding contrast to the edges of details inside of your image. So in this case, we can look, for example, at the nose here. So if I decrease the radius, it's decreasing that area and it's making it look less sharp. If I increase it, too much, it's starting to add too much contrast or too much emphasis on those uh, lines there, those details. So I like having this somewhere between three and four usually. I'll hold control and zoom out. And you can see here's a before, here's an after. So much sharper. The reason I like this method is it's kind of like using a gaggle filter where you can see the preview happening in real time. So we can see how it's affecting all the colors and the actual sharpening in this image as we adjust the sliders here in real time. And that to me is super helpful. So I'll go with these settings here and click OK. So that was the first method. The second method is going to be, let me start by deleting this layer here. So we have our original image here and we still have our decomposed lab image here. So the second method involves going to filters, enhance, sharpen, unsharp mask, and from here we can do the same thing so we can crank up the amount and you can see that's producing a nice sharp result so it's similar to the first method except you can only preview what's going on on the lab image which does not contain any color it's basically a black and white image so we can't really see how this is affecting the color but we can still see how sharp this is making certain elements in the photo and let me just increase the radius a little bit here and i'll click ok once that's done, you come over here to Colors, Components, and then Recompose. And it doesn't look like anything happened, but if I come over here to our original image, now our original image is sharpened, so it's basically taken all the elements from over here, and it's just put it back here on our original image layer. And if I hit Control z that'll undo the sharpening, and Control y so we could see what that looked like before and after. So it is a much sharper image again. And the other main benefit of this method is that it didn't affect the luminance of our original image. You'll remember when we dragged that L layer into the composition, it made the image ever so slightly brighter when it wasn't supposed to be. So it did affect the luminance a little bit of the bottom layer. In this case, it doesn't affect the luminance at all. And so the colors are a little bit more true to what we originally wanted them to be. My fifth and final tip involves exporting this. So you can of course export this as a JPEG or whatever file type you want, but keep in mind that whenever you export to a JPEG, it will lose quality because JPEG is a form of compression. So if you want the absolute sharpest photos whenever you export, you're gonna to want to export to something like a TIFF file. So to do that, just go to File, Export As, or hit Shift Control E. And I can rename this whatever I want, I'll just put final sharp image. And all you have to do is if you have a different extension there, just type TIF, 
So finalsharpimage.tif, that'll save this as a TIFF file. When I hit export, it's going to give you the options for a TIFF file. Set the compression to none. And you can check or uncheck save layers. I'll just keep this unchecked because we don't really need that. And I'll just leave this checked for now and leave these set to the defaults here. You can add a comment if you want. But when I hit export, that will export our sharp image. So if I come over here and just open that final file up, there is our final result. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. Don't forget to click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.